This is our rule number three, to affirm each other and to affirm our children, to affirm all the time because there's so much going on outside in the world that we need a safe place and your homes need to be a safe place, a haven away from the world so that when you come home, you're built back up again. And so if it's difficult to find something that um, you want to affirm your husband for, maybe you're angry with him or maybe he disappointed you or whatever it is, think about how God sees him. Think about how God sees her and affirm that. And the same thing for your children. See what the Lord has put inside of them and affirm them for that because you will create that person the way you affirm them. And so I just encourage you as an assignment, really, to go out and at least affirm your husbands or wives at least three times a day and your children and then go out from there and find other people that you can affirm. And what you're going to find is, is that it's a cyclical thing. It comes back to you. It gives you joy so that you have a household full of joy. We want to give you an opportunity now to pack, practice the power of affirmation. And so these are what we call stems. Can you say stems? A stem is an activator that makes it easy for you to go into the next part of the conversation. Now, a lot of people don't know how to get started or you're not used to affirming other people. I didn't know how to do that myself, but I quickly learned that it's very simple when you get off of your agenda and you start noticing the gifts and talents of somebody. Find something special and then you want to share it in a specific way. So we want to model this for you right now. And Linda, I'm going to give you an affirmation. So I'm going to pick one of those and I'm going to say, I cherish how you want things to be elegant, exquisite, and irresistible. In fact, as you know, I wanted to find a way to affirm you by having your license plate, if anybody knows, you look at her license plate, you'll see it says EEI, because for me, you are an elegant, exquisite, and irresistible woman. And I feel honored and cherished to be your husband. Oh, that touches my heart, honey. That Good. goes deep. I wanted it to. <laughs> yeah, it did. It really did. It goes deep you inside of me. You got the goosebumps, baby? I got the goosebumps, baby. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That goes deep into my heart. So I thank you for that. I appreciate that you uh, feel that way about me and that helps me um, take that with me so that when I'm out by myself or things are hard, I, I treasure that. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. So what can I say for you? Um, <laughs> honey, I love the way you love me. Your love just exudes out of you and I just kind of seep it all up. Maybe. <laughs> I need that love. It gives me, um, it gives me a foundation. I feel safe. I feel safe when I feel your love. I feel treasured, and I feel um, that I can do things on my own that I maybe would not have ever tried to do on my own. So your love just encompasses me because you give it to me freely all the time. And especially if you think I'm down or you're seeing that I'm down, you just give me more and more. And it just builds me up and it makes me better than I am. And so I thank you, honey, for giving me that kind of love because I know that's very rare and I, um, I just relish it. I relish it and I thank God for it. Thank you. That goes deep into me as well. You know, I think we both wanted a deep relationship because we've known what it's been like not to have that yes which then caused us to want it even more strongly and so i feel the same way about you and let's agree we're just going to continue that journey for the rest of our lives i agree baby all I agree. right baby <laughs> <laughs> all right
See, just the gift of standing up and walking to somebody is an affirmation. Listening is an affirmation. Let me give you an extra bonus here. Write this down if you will. I call it the four S's. Try this right now and see what happens. Soft eyes. Can we say that? Soft eyes. Soft words. Soft touch. Soft heart. Ready? Soft eyes, soft words, soft, soft eyes, soft words, soft touch, soft heart. And now, as you're sharing this with your person, now give that to them as well. All right. How many of you are successful at being able to give an affirmation to your person? I'd like to have a volunteer come up here or just stand, if you will, and share how that's impacting you. Who would be willing to share? Let's give them a round of applause for participating. <laughs> See, Josh took her hand. That works. Okay, so what happened for you? Oh, can you just stand up here so people can see you? Can you see your face right now? Can you see that there's something's happened and it's good? That's the power of affirmation. Don't even know what it is, but we can tell it worked. All right, Kiko, so what happened? Well, I, at first I said, we didn't come here with an intention to cry, <laughs> but you can't do this without getting to the deep root of things. And I remember telling him, oh. take a breath. Take all the time you need. See, we rush people and people need time. It takes time to process things. It's okay to take time. It's a gift. Time is a gift. By the time we got to the end of this. Can you speak a little louder? Yeah. I told him about a week ago because we knew this was coming up and it just sparked some Yeah, can, every, can you hear them? You can't hear? Is this, is this on? Maybe the battery is gone? No, battery says it's on. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. volume's good. All right. So, Kiko, we're going to start again. Okay. I, I remember telling him about a week ago when we knew this was coming up. And, you know, just sparks all kinds of thoughts like we're going to a marriage seminar. <laughs> and we haven't done this for a while. Um, because we're just, we're going. And, um... I remember saying to him, I knew that we were going to have to become a little bit vulnerable. And I said, you know, uh, my life experiences were harsh. And I want to say right now we're in a season where we're seeing God heal and restore. I mean, from parents, grandparents down to our kids. So this is not a complaint. This is not a... Um, it's an observation. It's an observation. It's not a judgment, it's an observation. Hold on. Can you hear us now? The battery, can you hear us now? Is that okay? So we said it's an observation, not a judgment. Yes. Um, but having, it's something about, I think there's hot spot. Oh, here maybe. we go. Yeah, there's spots in here where this goes there we out. Go. But I just said, I said, you know, all through, really all through my life up until this season, when we finally can slow down a little, and it is just mostly the two of us, that there are, when you have that kind of harsh life background. background, you learn how to put a guard. And and it's this is not a, a blaming, I don't it's just what it was. I mean, back in the day, the way that you corrected kids or raised kids was just a lot different than you do now. Um but you learn to put a guard up. And I, I would say, you know, there were times I could not let that guard down because if I did, you know, as a kid, if you let that guard down, you're getting 20 swats with the belt. Oh. Keep breathing. But what I can learn today, what I've known for a long time, but able to articulate today is to be able to look what God's put in my life. But this partner, he's taught me. 
is that he is stuck. <sighs> Sorry. Look at him and tell him that. I did. I started crying earlier. <laughs> well, tell him again. He wouldn't mind. This is the good stuff. <laughs> Being able to thank him and tell him that I appreciate that he is stuck through thick and thin. And what I, what I brought to him was not easy. But he's stuck with it. He's been faithful to us. He has not abandoned us. And in that, he has demonstrated Jesus to us. So I appreciate that so much about him. Thank you, Kiko. What would you say, can you see that right now she's being transformed. She's releasing unfinished business that's been going on probably since the beginning of time in your life. And by Josh giving her total unconditional love to UL in spite of behavior, which I'm sure was not always easy, you decided to see that the relationship was more important than her unhealthy behavior because you saw the essence of who God made not the circumstances you were currently just in. So as you heard her say these things to you, Josh, what was going on inside of you as she was acknowledging you for what you've done for her? Well, total honesty, as she's saying it to me, I start rolling over in my mind whether or not that's actually true, you know? And, um, but I said it differently early in our relationship that I made a decision that I love her more than anything I'll ever have conflict with her about. Say that again. That I love her more than anything I will ever have conflict with her about. Powerful. So that I will always give the conflict up before I give her up. He's been faithful. Beautiful. And Josh, while you're up here, if you'd be willing to share what you got as receiving, what you gave to her. What I gave to her is I shared with her that I appreciate her being uniquely Kiko. And uh, you know, everyone is different. Everyone in the world is different. But what I love about the uniqueness of her is the way that she sees and hears people and including me and uh that her, her her thoughtfulness you see her as diligent kiko who's makes everything happen but the thoughtfulness of it down to the minute detail where she's thinking about not just the situation and atmosphere but she's actually thinking about the person and i've she can if she knows you and she's heard you and it's your birthday she's thought something very specific not just to fit the occasion but to fit you and that's uh amazing about her really and so um i i'm just blessed you know because it it makes me better yeah to be with her oh beautiful let's give him a round of applause thank you guys There is a drug. We're encouraging you to become druggies. <laughs> and this is a free drug. God created it. It's called endorphins. And when you get high, and people are using drugs in an inappropriate way, what they're really looking for is the high that comes from that chemical. Well, the good news is that endorphins are naturally within your body and you just saw released in Kiko and Josh endorphins of unconditional love. And the idea, remember talking about a goosebump? Did they, did they have a goosebump feeling right there? Did you have a goosebump feeling just watching that? So how are you creating those kinds of experiences every day in your own life, just in your little world, and then sharing that with other people? It costs nothing to do this. Try it with the waitress. Try it with someone who's taking care of you at the bank. Try it as someone who answers the customer service number that you've been waiting on for 20 minutes. And instead of giving them a hard time, acknowledging, thank you for being there, that someone answered. What's the gift that's available to you? 
So who else would like to share? Because there's power in hearing the story. So who else would share, like to share what took place as a result of your giving an affirmation to your loved one? Who else would like to share? Come on up. Let's give them a round of applause. Now this, is, see, he just gave her an affirmation by waiting for her. Men, how often are you running ahead of your spouse instead of walking at their same pace? Come on over here. Rachel and? Jean. Je what is it? Jean. Jean? Jean? Yes, sir. I'm going to go in between you so we can both see these. But I'll keep holding hands. I like that. <laughs> All right. So who's talking first here? He All right, he is. Uh, it gave to us a deeper level of intimacy. Uh, we came into this not, not thinking we had a perfect marriage. We've had our ups and downs, but we came into this thinking we had a great marriage. Was, she's my best friend, and I'd like to say that I'm hers. And we came into this hoping that we could take more from it. Uh, we do the affirmations, we, we, we do the touches, the holds, and the, the things for each other. But at the same time, coming in here saying these things got us a deeper level of intimacy, a deeper level of vulnerability that a new achievement unlocked in our marriage to to take us to another level that I didn't think was possible. We always say that. I didn't think it was possible, and it always is. And, and what was that thing that got unlocked today? Uh, just strength and judgment. Uh, letting go of that judgment and, and getting past that initial barrier of knowing that I always have her best interest in heart. And, and letting go of that initial emotional reaction of whatever frustration, upset, anger, and just giving me the moment, the patience, and seeing it for what it is that I've always got her best interest at heart, not to judge the worst in the situation. Beautiful. What would you like to share, Rachel? I think for me, my biggest part is just based off of my life experiences, my childhood and everything, I always think everyone's out to get me. Like my, just my, the judgmental piece was beautiful because so many things, like you said, when you write it and it comes to mind, um, I didn't realize how much I've been holding on to. And when I got to write the notes and I showed them to him, it showed me like I even held so much towards him. I didn't even realize that was based on so many other judgments that I was able to release today. Oh, beautiful. Let's give him a round of applause. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Who else would like to share? It's in the power of your self-disclosure. That's another tool, self-disclosure. Both couples that you've just seen gave self-disclosure. We're afraid of letting people know the inner world. But the truth is that's when intimacy happens. What is intimacy? In to me see. I have to be willing to let you into my world. And when people aren't willing to let you into their world, guess what tool you use? You self-disclose, which then makes it easy for them. Sometimes it won't be comfortable for them, which is telling you they just have unfinished business. Give them grace, give them love. I call it the drip method. That you just drip unconditional love on people and over time, love always wins. Anyone else want to share? Yes, John and Kathy, if you want to come up, let's give them a round of applause. You always say, do something Come on uncomfortable. Here. What's that? You always say, do something uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. So you're doing that now? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. So who's going to start off? Am I going to start off? <laughs> I'll start off. All I'll right. Start off. I'll, uh, what am I saying anyway? <laughs> what am I doing? Well, who who, <laughs> who chose to come up here? I did. All right. And I chose to come up here because I had no idea what I was going to do when I came up here. Oh my goodness, John, that, that is a miracle, guys. Usually he has to have everything figured out in right. advance. How exactly. many of you are like that? You got to have everything yeah. figured out in advance before you say or do anything. Stop that. It's killing yourself and the relationship. Amen. What is he doing? He's being spontaneous. Absolutely. Yeah, which is not something I'm comfortable with at all. But, um, hey man, I, I realized that if we walk out of here without doing this, I'll have gone out with less than I could have had if we had done this. So, I, again, I... <laughs> so, um, uh, so what do I, do I share what I share with my wife? Or? What, 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 what is the gift that you're taking away from tonight? Um, just a, a deeper uh, experience of being more vulnerable.
I mean, look at all these people here. I'm being vulnerable before you, all you people. I mean, all my life, pretty much, I have had a difficult time trusting people. That has been a major, major issue because of past experiences. And uh, so I'm uh, uh, getting over my distrust, <laughs> being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to, to just be up here and say whatever comes out. And if it doesn't come out too well, then praise the Lord. <laughs> so now that you're operating this way, John, what's it doing for you? Because you've made a decision to make a decision. Is that correct? It's one step at a time. So I'm making this one step. So I'll make other steps, praise the Lord. But yeah, it's a, it's just, you know, in the course the other day with Bill, he was talking about boxes, you know, we're, people are in boxes, we're all in some kind of a box. So the, the only way to get out of the box is to do something uncomfortable. <laughs> do something you never did before. I mean, which is Bill, what Bill's been talking about. And uh, break free from your old habits and your old ways of doing something. And so, and so I, mean, I didn't even ask God if I should come up here and do this, which is unusual. <laughs> I just said, let's do it. So <laughs> that's another didn't gift want is, to, but... is be spontaneous every day in your relationship. Shock your partner with some loving, spontaneous gesture. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now so, she wants to say something, John. Well, I, I, one thing that I... Are was, you complete, John? That's the question. Well, I was going to say what I said to her. Should oh. I say that? Would you like to hear that again? Yes. Oh. Okay, so what I said to my... Should I be looking at my wife? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. should be over here. I'll get out of the way. <laughs> you can hold her hand, too. I, 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 this is what I said, you know. From, you know, I was telling her that we were listening to a couple the other day and um they're friends of bill and linda and uh, they had just gotten married and the husband was saying you know i wrote down everything i wanted in a woman and then i think he said that god gave me what i wanted but you know the lord said a while ago when i was going to get married and my sister encouraged me to do that to do the same thing write everything i wanted down on a woman but then i realized i had no idea what I needed and really even what I wanted. But I knew that God knew exactly what I needed and exactly what I wanted. And so when he gave me Kathy, my wife, when he gave me you, he gave me exactly what I needed in a deeper way than I could ever understand. And so I thank you for loving me, <laughs> which for me was a miracle because I didn't think, you know, I mean, can anybody love me? <laughs> but my wife loves me. It's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. And as she, as you have loved me, then I, I feel like I've come out of the box and we're coming out of our boxes together. And it's a wonderful thing. And so it's a journey. And I thank you for being on the journey with me. I just thank you and appreciate everything that you've just said. I respect you for the, um, the way that you live your life, the way that you've aligned your thing, your whole being with God's principles, putting him first in yourself. Sometimes you forget, I think I mentioned that, but you, in that order, you always put me first. And I appreciate that so much. You open the door for me every single day of my life. Whenever we go, you're always thinking about me. And it's just, I feel cherished and loved. And um, this godly order, I was in a marriage before where that godly order wasn't there. And it just makes all the difference in the world. And I love you for it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Now, was that a goosebump moment or what? <laughs> so, create goosebump moments and watch what happens. Darling, anything coming to you that you want to share at this moment? Well, I, um, I'm blown away with the way that the Lord goes in and heals. And um, by John and Kathy coming up and by... Um, everyone that's come up, 
you all have taken the healing to a deeper level. And the Lord is able to go in and take all that garbage out. So you'll remember the trauma, but it won't hold you back. The chains are dropped. And that's what's the most important thing. And in a marriage relationship, you can do that for each other. That's what it's meant to be when you're molded together as one, is that you heal all of these. We all have come together with a past that didn't work. Nobody's exempt from that. But you can heal each other by being gentle and by being understanding and by being vulnerable because just as these couples have done for you to give you a model which is just a miracle of God the model that they gave all of you when you do that you'll heal wounds that are there that you didn't even know were there but are chains that are holding you back are chains that are keeping you from moving into the destiny and the purpose the purpose that god has he has an assignment for you but he can't take you wounded and so you need to get together and work on it together and you are not enemies of each other you are not the enemy so don't let satan whisper in your ear and say that you are you just have to drop all of the offenses. You know, there's a joy that comes. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> she told me I could go up here by myself. And so let me tell you what I told her. Told who? Gaynell. Who's Gaynell? Gaynell is the other half of my soul. All right. And so let me just say this. Um, somebody define the word cherish for me. What it means? What it means. You're not going to be able to. Don't get that phone out. Oh. Hey, oh, uh, okay. I thought you wanted me to do that. I might let Linda oh. give me the definition <laughs> without. What, what, he wants your answer. Some for lady that. tell me, what does the word cherish mean? What does cherish mean? What? I can't. Treasure. Can't. Treasure, honor, 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 honor. 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 Love. valued, valued, hold dearly. Hold dearly. Mm -hmm. The word cherish is a very important word, and they put on this the word cherish. But the word cherish means something that is without price. That is, it's something that has such great value that you could never pay for that which is cherished. It's like the the Hope Diamond, or it's like the jewelry that's in in Windsor Castle. They have a they have jewelry on William, William Windsor Castle that belongs to the to the king, to the royalty. And it's cherished. The crown on the queen's head is cherished. It's very cherished. And I use that word with Gaynell all the time. I cherished her from the first time I met her. I can tell you what attracted me to her. She attra I was attracted to her because I, I never smelled her. There was something about how clean she was. I don't know if you understand what that means, but it's, it's not an insult to anybody else. It's just that there was a fragrance about her life and it was about the way that she was brought up. It's the way that she lived, the way that her humor is, all of you that know her really, really know her, her humor is absolutely off the charts. You never know when it's going to show up, and it show up right at the right time. And the That's a compliment, time. Gaynell. And the wrong time, it shows up. But it, it's something I cherish. I cherish her as a person. And so I told her I cherished her, that she completed me. She literally completes me. Nobody else could have ever put up with me. If she was like me, we would be camping on the moon. As simple as that. But the word cherish is some word that we don't use very often in our vocabulary. And we need to get to the place where we can cherish one another. I cherish the way that they cherish one another. You can see it in their action. Um, that was a newlywed that stood up before you and and Jed and Kathy, they're newlyweds. And yet they were able to describe and say what a lot of people have, don't have the ability to say because we don't work on it. And so 
to cherish, I cherish the church. He cherishes the bride. It says that, you know, you love, honor, and to cherish. You said that in your vows and in your weddings. And so when I listen to him and I watch them, they're someone that we can cherish as part of the body of Christ where we worship. And that's very important. And then the thing about compliments, I already mentioned that uh, Bill goes around the table, he spoke to everybody, and he always has a compliment. He'll call me on the phone with a compliment. I know how valuable that is because I told a woman one time that was a head of a national organization. She's a friend of mine from time when they were newlyweds, and he and his, her husband, he's gone on to be with the Lord, and they would have the French-Indian War. Uh, she was Indian, he was French, and uh, they would fight until it was a thing that was laughable all over the neighborhood. She was Miss Texas. And so they lived in a trailer and they would beat one another and fight and she would climb over the fence chasing him, you know, and her, her, and her, her um, gown. night gown. She, she would she would literally chase him out the door and they became powerful powerful ministers of the gospel when they began to learn to love one another and probably there's people that if they could tame that tiger they may have ministry because that's where that that desire is to have something that's really special and i called her one matter of fact she called me one day and at the end of the conversation, I just told her, I believe in you. A few weeks later, I heard from her. And she said, Claudia, you'll never know this. said, nobody ever tells me they believe in me. Nobody ever affirm, affirms me. Nobody ever talks to me about what we do and if we have any value to the, valuable to the body of Christ. She said, when you said, I believe in you, she said, I wept for three days and could not stop weeping because of just a simple affirmation. And so their affirmation of us, their affirmation of marriage is the moment that I wanted to come into this room. I told them I wanted to come and do this and we would pay for it because I wanted you to come here where you could get something that's valuable. And there's some of you that may need to have more, you know, of this. And so he's told you earlier without really making a point of it that uh, they're going to take this on. There'll be people probably from all over America that will be involved in it, but you'll have an opportunity to be involved in this as well. And so I just want to thank you guys. You made it real easy for us to look in our own hearts and to see what we are at work. And Gaynell's complaint my life has always been the same. You talk all day, and when you come home, you don't have anything to say. Well, I understand that women have 150 words to say a day, and men have 150,000 words a day, and men only have 50,000. And so I told her, when I came home, I've run out of words. <laughs> And it didn't help a bit because she's still waiting on that conversation after 58 years. Amen. And so just thank you at this moment. I think we need to say thank you. I think we need to thank them. If you could just do what you can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go, honey. Thank you.